Hey guys, this is Craig Migliacci with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are 10 tips to help your new HVACR employee grow in the company and in the field. So whether you're the employer or the lead service technician or lead installation technician and you have a new helper, we're going over 10 tips to help develop that new technician. Tip number one is to cycle your new hires in with your lead technician for the company. So either do that or one of your best communicators that's a technician in, in the company. So you want to have your new hire know that they're fitting in. You know, they're going to ask these questions in their mind. Am I fitting in? Am I, am I doing a good job? You know, is this a good fit for me? So you also want that person to grow very well. So you don't want to take your new hires and place that person with a lower tier technician. You know, because they're not going to learn very well, you know, they're, they're, there's going to be missing, missing opportunity there. So if you are able to structure your company in a way where you have your new hires cycling through with your lead technician, and then from there, maybe they go on and, and they're doing jobs on their own, or they're going from there and working with another technician that's maybe lower, you know, in the company, that's, that's okay. But you want to cycle these new technicians that maybe haven't gone to school or, uh, haven't uh, had experience in the HVACR field, you know, you want to cycle them through with your most knowledgeable and best communicator in the company. Tip number two is to set doable goals for your new hire, your new technician. So say it's uh, some duct work or something like that, you know, you might want to say, okay, I'm looking for you to get that done in about four hours. That should take you about this amount of time. I know you're new. It's going to take you probably about this amount of time, but we want to, you know, increase our speed, but also be able to have the job done well. So it's more important to have a job done well than speed, but speed will come with a job well done because they won't have to go back, you know, and, and, and redo it again. So if you set doable goals, whether that's a new experience to encourage excitement in that new technician, or if it's doing a job faster or just better in quality, just small, small attainable little goals for that technician to, to be able to hit that mark. And when they hit that mark, they're going to know you know, whether that they're good or they're, they're not doing a good job. So make sure it's doable and not extreme, extreme goals for a new hire that's new to the field. Tip number three is in the beginning stages of a new technician, they're learning the tree, right? And you want them to have quality work and do it in a timely manner. So what you want to do is you want to teach them to be able to look forward past the tasks that they're currently working on, maybe two to three steps forward in the beginning, because you, you well know that, you may know 10 steps forward or 20 steps forward. So in your mind, so if say you're working on some gas lines, have, have that technician start to think about, oh, I'm going to have to do this next. I'm going to have to do this next so that they can set tools in the proper places, don't have to do the same job twice, uh, that they can uh, work towards this end goal of at the end of the day. So whether that's in the morning, kind of laying laying out, okay, this is what I want to accomplish. This is where we're going. You're going to do this task for now, but once we get that done, we're going to move on. So you want to be able to have them as they grow to start looking multiple steps forward. That's going to help your efficiency as a whole, and that's going to help that technician not get lost in the job that they're doing that particular time. They're going to know the importance of that job and that we can't move on to the next step until that task is complete. So even if it feels like it's not an important task, it really is because we cannot move on until that's done. Tip number four is to teach an employee to work efficiently, meaning even in the little things such as the tool movement and supply movement. So for instance, say you're going up on a roof. Every time that you go up the ladder, you should be taking a tool or supplies that you need with you. Every time you come down, before you come down, look around, see the things that you're done using and bring them down with you. This way that at the end of the day, you don't have some large cleanup to do. So whether you're working in a crawl space or a basement or an attic or inside the, the building, you know, always keep that site around you clean. So every time you have to go back down to the truck, clean up, take that stuff down with you because maybe you have the boss coming in and looking at the site. You don't want it to look like a, a trash pile. And the same thing with the building owner. You don't want to, it to look dirty. You know, when you have a clean job site, it makes you look even more professional and more that you know what you're doing. So, so just teach them even the little things such as supply and tool movement. Tip number five is to mix some criticism with positivity. So I I promise you, just like 
everybody else on the planet, somebody is not going to receive what you're trying to tell them they're doing wrong if everything they hear from you is negative. So you got to be able to give them a way to improve themselves and give them some positives about what they're already doing. So maybe they're loyal to the company or maybe they are a hard worker, but they're not getting this tri- this thing that you're trying to teach them how to do. So, so just remember those things you need to be able to mix that positivity with criticism in order for them to accept what you're telling them. Uh, so so that's, a, that's a huge deal. Tip number six is to make sure that you have an overall positive work environment. You know, there's nothing wrong with chop busting and some competition and skill level, joking around. You know, you need to be able to have a, a, a fun time, you know, talk to each other and, and enjoy yourself while you're working. Uh, but you want to make sure that for the employee that it's not developing into a negative work environment because nobody wants to get stuck in that type of environment. And you don't know who you completely have yet. You know, it's a new hire. Maybe they've been working for a couple couple weeks. You know, that technician could be fantastic in the future. could be something that somebody that's very, very valuable to your company and in the field as a whole. So, you know, you want to be able to invest in that person. Don't beat that person down. You know, make sure that it's either a neutral environment or a positive environment because at the end of the day, that employee wants to know that they're at least appreciated or they're doing a good job. You know, those types of things. You don't have to let them know every single day necessarily. You know, everybody has their own strategies, but it needs to be at least neutral or positive. You know, at the end of the week, you know, hey, or at the end of the job, you did a good job here or, you know, this job looks nice. It doesn't have to be much but something to keep everything on the positive positive side. Tip number seven is to press the employee a bit, challenge them a bit. You know, I'm not talking about going to the extreme and, and setting time goals that are, are not real, but what I'm talking about is setting some time goals for some small jobs that is their part. So maybe it takes a normal technician, maybe three hours to do that. I wanna see how long it's gonna take you to do that. So you gotta remember that if a individual wants to learn in our field and wants to grow, then they want to get challenged. Whether they say it or not, they want to get challenged a bit. But once again, don't go to the extreme, but this is going to be able to give you a gauge of whether they're going to flop or whether they're going to excel. So if they're doing the same job every day, you know, maybe you're going to challenge them to do that job in a better quality manner or a faster manner. You know, if, if it's something new, challenging them to take the things that they already learned about uh, some of these other aspects and apply it over here to this new one. So, so it's definitely important to challenge a new employee for their for their growth. Tip number eight is to find free resources or inexpensive resources for that technician to be able to learn with. And so maybe it's at a technical school at night for adults, or maybe it's a, it's a book and a workbook, such that we have our our book and a workbook coming out. You know, you could have them read a chapter or something like that, or watch a video. And maybe the next day you can ask them, okay, so would you learn about that? And maybe challenge them a little bit in that. So you want to be able to provide some way for them to, to grow in the field. So there's sometimes there's free resources for the state. You know, sometimes the state puts uh, some green training together, you know, so there could be different resources in your area that maybe you're not aware of. Maybe you should look into that and you can say, hey, you should go check this out. And especially if the if this training is at night or off the clock, then you're going to be able to tell, OK, well, are they putting their time in? You know, are they trying to better themselves? So you're going to be able to tell fairly rapidly whether they're this employee is willing to invest in themselves or not. You know, if they're not willing to invest in themselves and and things just aren't going well, then maybe, you know, you need to find a different person, you know, or a better talent, you know. So you got to also look at their circumstance. If they have a family and different things going on, they can't get out at night. But, you know, a book or, you know, a book, workbook, all that type of stuff, that's stuff that they can do at home in between. There's no excuses for that. Or videos, you know, there's no excuses for not being able to watch a five minute, 10 minute video, you know, and then talk about it the next day. So if there's something that you can do overall to help grow that technician, uh, that's that's huge. Tip number nine is to make the best use of your drive time to and from the job sites to service calls and also make the best use of time when you're working next to that new technician. So, you know, in reference to drive time, that's that's completely open. You know, during that time, you should be able to invest in that in that new technician. Hopefully they're hungry enough. You know, sometimes they're not hungry enough and you know, if they're not hungry and they're not growing fast enough, then maybe that's not the right person for the job. Maybe they're not built for it. But when you do have somebody that's an 
just an empty vessel and they're hungry to learn, you know, the, the moose that you can teach them is, is going to be during these, these times, you know, during the drive time. I remember a lot of discussions that I had during the drive time when I was a helper and I was just sucking in this information. I was taking notes, all kinds of stuff. And so maybe during your lunchtime or maybe when you're working next to that individual on the job site, there's two things with the, with the job site. You know, the employee needs to think about, am I slowing down while I'm asking you questions? I don't want to slow the work process down. And then the, the lead technician is thinking about, you know, are they messing up while we're, talk, while we're talking? We don't want any mess ups in the job. You know, is this something that, that we can talk through a subject while we're working? Because there's other instances when you shouldn't be talking, you're just concentrating on the task at hand. So there are some, some ways to make the best use of your time. Tip number 10 is to lead by example and take pride in your job. Show your enthusiasm for the trade or for that job because you got to remember that that person is your product in the end. So everybody's built differently and, and that a new hire may not be absorbing as much information as your as your last one. They may not be working as hard, but in the end, you have to, as you being the lead installer or you being the employer that's working with this a new installer or service technician, you're trying to build that person up. That's you know you're trying to make that person profitable for the company, and regardless, that person's going to reflect on you. So if you're the person that that everybody knows is is like somebody that's teaching people, is knowledgeable and cares about people, you know, that's the, the end goal because you, you can take pride in your job that you do, but you got to remember if you're building multiple technicians, you know, they're going to be able to complete way more jobs than you're ever going to be able to complete in your whole life. So people are, are products. So whether it's the, we're doing the job for the homeowner or the building owner, you know, we're teaching that new technician so that they can do a good job and support their family well in the future. You know, that's our product in the end. So we always got to remember that and just, just be enthusiastic in what we're doing and let them see why we're doing what we're doing, why we take pride in what we're doing. So you may have noticed this video is a little bit sappy, a little bit communication based, but I think it's very important. And me being a teacher, I get to see a lot of employers and their communication to me and all of the employees, meaning my students, and how this all meshes. Uh, so I know what the students are capable of, what level they're at, how they act, if they're a hard worker, and then I see the employers and, and what's happening and some of the feedback. So that's, that's pretty interesting to me. Uh, but I want everybody to mesh real well. So I want the employees and the employers to be able to effectively support their families and enjoy what they're doing for a living. So, so I'm tr putting these videos out. We put our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paper back together to get all of my thoughts out on refrigerant handling and checking the charge and preparing a system for refrigerant. We've got articles over at the website at acservicetech.com. So we're trying to do what we can to invest in the new technicians for our field. So with that, that's it. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.